All right, for everyone who wants to sing and play slow dancing in a burning room the way that I do it, um, typically uh, I just try to get the groove of the song, get the feel that John May is going for. Um, we're not going to be crazy about like complete perfect voicings that he does. So remember when it comes to singing and playing guitar, we have our, our rules, which is first rule, get to listenable. Um, then the next rule will be working on our confidence and getting better and getting better phrasings and things like that. Um, then the third step will be arrangement, which is how we're going to arrange it for ourselves uh, uh, solo. And then number four, mastery. So first stage, listenable for the song. We're going to be tackling the chords first. You want to get the chords right away. So the the song follows a 641, which we're going to be doing A minor. And then F shape, C. So this is using a, a capo on the fourth fret. Uh, like for all the beginners who want to use, I'm doing open chords first for y'all. So we're going A minor, F, C. Really simple. The chorus is a G. And then we got A minor, F, and then a G, and then A minor, F, and then it comes back to an A minor, and then a F to a C. Um, and the bridge is only going to be adding a D minor, A minor, and then G, F. So you're just walking down some chords. So it's pretty simple. Um, that's the whole song chord-wise. Obviously, we're going to get into the actual phrasings of it. Um, and so that's for all the people who do not want to use bar chords, but they do want to sing the song. So from the get-go, understand that that's what it is. We're just following that template for the song. Um, everything I do now is going to be using different letter names for chords because I'm going to be using um, bar chords for you guys. So just now, capo was off. So remember, the chords that you need to know is A minor for the verse, F, C, and then the chorus is G, A minor, F, and then the bridge is D minor, A minor, G, F. Um, I have a beginner lesson on how to do this for guitarists. I'll link that in the description. Um, if that, if you get confused uh, as a beginner trying to sing this, uh, then you should be good. Now, cable off. We're moving into intermediate mode, bar chord time. Um, just one, actually, before I really jump into that, uh, just for anyone who's trying to do the intro of it, um, obviously it's pretty tricky. Trying to get all that doing all the fancy stuff that he does, but you can kind of simulate it. Set up the A minor chord and just do. So I'm just hitting on the on the D string, hammering on the second fret and then hitting the B string. So. And then I've got my little phrase that and then all I'm gonna do is do a hammer on on the second fret on the G string. Hammer on, pull off. Or you could just pick it. And then you've got F, C. So you can kind of get the sound that he has. Anyway, that's for the intro. All right, let's go everybody. It's time to sing, play some guitar. So for everyone else who's not a beginner on the guitar, these are the chords. So we're starting off, obviously at the same progression. It's a six, four, one. And then the chorus is a five, six, four, one. And then the bridge is gonna be a two, six, five, four. So that's for everyone who has done the music theory side of us and they understand numbers. Uh, for everyone else, we're gonna be starting. It's gonna be a C sharp minor seven or C sharp minor. I play a minor seven and then I do an A and then an E. So whatever is comfortable for you, you can jump down here and you can do C minor seven like this. Or you could do whatever you're feeling, do whatever you feel comfortable. Typically when I move to arrangement side, I kind of do a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, so for the verse, we're gonna be tackling it's C sharp minor seven. And then we got an A to an E. Really easy. Uh, now, when we go into the listenable part of it, remember we've got these chord shapes. So we want to be just focusing on the vocal rhythm first. If you've already learned how to sing this properly, kudos to you, it's awesome. 
Um, but what we want to be doing is just focusing on the vocal rhythm so that we can connect the chord changes with the vocal rhythm. So I would start off very, very simply. So we'd get this first chord, the C. I like to play it like this, C minor seven like this. Um, if you guys are uncomfortable with these chord shapes, it's very, very simple. So starting from the E string, I'm playing on the ninth fret. And then the A string, I've got the 11th, nine, nine, nine. You only have to really do those. That's the bar chord. And then we're going to A chord here. So starting on the E string, uh, five, seven, seven, six, five. And then I play the E um, is going to be uh, starting on the A string, seven, nine, nine, nine. So hopefully that helps you guys and we're not going too crazy with this stuff. Um, obviously, chord shapes, seriously, like if you're just playing bass notes, that's all I really care about. We're trying to just get the chord change in time with the vocal rhythm. So be like, it's not a silly little moment. It's not the storm or the calm. This is a deep and dying breath of this love that we've been working on. I can't sleep. Don't you like I want to? So I can feel you in my arms. Nobody's gonna come and save you. We pull too many balls. So now when we get to down, this is the like the chorus or his like little um, refrain section. I'm jumping in on a B chord. So this B chord can be played wherever you like to play a B, but I play it uh, starting seventh fret on the E string, nine, nine, and then eight, and then seven, seven. Just a B chord, just a straight B major chord, bam. And then back to the C sharp. Back to the B, C sharp, A. So we go going down, two, three, and you can see it too. We go going down, and you know that we're doomed, my dear. Very, very simple. It's not that crazy of a song. So once you've got these chord shapes very comfortable, you want to line up the vocal rhythms. There's a lot of content on the internet that's going to help you out. This is the blueprint of how you're going to get this done. If any area of this is challenging for you, like say you are stuck on chords, you can always look up. There's a bazillion, just like crazy amounts of content on like how to play exactly like John Mayer, but this is more giving you the blueprint of how you can approach the practice. So you have the chord shapes. Um, if you need extra help with the chord shapes, Google them. They will help you. There's plenty of stuff online. Um, now you're going to get those chord shapes done and you're going to get the vocal rhythm in time. Now, once you've got that down, um, we're moving on to the confidence stage. Now, confidence when it comes to this song is all about you doing the reps you doing the reps in time, and then you start adding some stuff. So for instance, confidence, I would say like, I'm going to add some strumming patterns. So, so for me, I would do like a. That's me. That's a very confident guitar part for myself. So just adding strums. Now, when I'm doing that, you can see I'm changing through the multiple chords, but that's not how I want you to practice. Because at the beginning, these extra chord strumming things that you're gonna add, figure out what it is you wanna do. Um, I do my strumming patterns based on the drum groove and the bass groove, like we said in the, in the intro videos for singing and playing guitar. But what's gonna happen here is you wanna figure out the groove that you wanna get. Um, and like when you're listening to a song, you obviously don't wanna just copy the guitar part because there's the things that create the feel are the bass and the drums. Uh, and so listen to those parts and then see how you can um, manipulate the guitar part to then connect with the bass and drums. Then it will sound more like a very holistic uh, solo performance because you don't want to try and copy exactly the guitar part because it just won't 
it won't like hit as well as it can. And you're not John Mayer. If you're watching this video, you're not John Mayer. So you're not going to, you're not going to sound exactly and perfect like him. Um, so reverse engineering how I would like to play the song. It's like, and so I would just get my rhythm. Silly little moment. Start the storm before the calm. Is it and dying bread? This love that we've been working on. It seemed to hold you like I want to. So I can feel you in my own. Now I'm practicing my strumming part without the chord changes. You want to practice your right hand strumming. Remember getting that confidence. Get that confidence in that right hand strumming before you start adding chord changes. Because once you, do, if you try and do two at the same time, um, typically you will like there's a lot of information that's happening between the singing, the chord changes, the melody, the lyrics, and then you've got this extra right hand rhythm that you're adding. Oh my God, your brain is going to be like, Psh. so just remember, keep it simple, only tackle one thing at a time. So with confidence building in the song, you want to build your right hand to connect with the vocal rhythm. Those are the two things that matter the most, um, your right hand and your vocal rhythm. Everything else uh, is secondary and they are all important, Everything's important. We want to be great. But if we're picking on order of importance, vocal rhythm, right hand rhythm. It's not a silly little moment. It's not the storm before the calm. This is a deep and dying breath of this love that we've been working on. And now, so we get to we go get to the that little refrain chorus thing. And we're going down, and you can see it too. And we're going down, and you know that we're done, my dear. We're slow dancing in a burning room. So you can see that just with the right hand and just singing it has a lot of listenability and it has a lot of feel. Now we're gonna add the chords. It's not a silly little moment. It's not the storm before the calm. This isn't even dying breath. The stuff that we've been working on. And then we're going down. And you can see it too. And we're going down. So you can see how that's how the building blocks of you getting to the place where you're going to be confident. Um, so that's pretty much all you're going to do. And so the first part of the song is probably going to take you an hour, two hours, three hours, probably something like that. The next part of that is going to take you probably another like five hours of practice. Um, and then we're going to come to the arrangement part, which is going to be like, figure out what you want to do. Um, there's a couple of tricks that I do with this song. These are very, very easy tricks that you can approach. Um, I will typically split the chords I'm playing. So instead of me playing like, it's not a silly little moment, playing all the notes, I do, it's not a silly thing. So I just play the top parts. It's not a silly little moment. It's not the storm before the calm. So you see, I'm like, boom. And that gets me a cool little thing and the uh, cool little like split between the notes and it really isolates my guitar playing to give room for the lyrics. And then what you can also do is I like to throw in an E major chord down here. Um, when we're going into that, we're going down. So when I'm doing that and you know that, we, oh, where's the, I like So you see how I like led into that chorus in a really nice way. You can see it too. And we go down. And you know that we don't my dear slow dancing. So that's 
that's kind of how I would approach singing that um, and and arranging that. And if you want to, uh, just drop all, like if you want to bring a really, really intimate chorus, like a super, super intimate, I mean, sorry, verse. Um, I was the one you'd always dreamed of. And you were the one I tried to draw. How dare you say it's nothing to me? And baby, you're the only light I ever saw. So you see, I'm just doing bass notes. Um, that can be something really, really clever that you can do if you want to be really, really like intimate with people um, and bring it back. Uh, and then obviously when we get to the bridge, you can add that that F sharp minor chord. Um, and go cry about it, why don't you? Like a big strum there is like a total banger of for arrangement. Typically, I come down here because I want to go, and we're going down. Uh, I mean, sorry. I'll go cry about it, why don't you? Yeah. Go cry about it, why don't you? Yeah, I reckon that just, for me, I love that. Um, now, for everyone who is more advanced uh, and they're like, okay, Luan, you've been talking about singing and playing guitar, but how do I do all the super cool, all that cool jazz? Uh, all that, not jazz, but all that cool, like cool stuff that the Hendrixy John Mary thing that he does. Um, obviously when you like, I mean, Google the, this lick, if you want to. So like you can be quite clever, but this is more for advanced people. So you guys should really know these chord shapes. If you don't know these chord shapes, just Google them. I'm not going to go. Actually, maybe I can. I'm going to test this out because it's one of the first videos that we've been doing like singing and playing guitar. So I'm trying to cover all bases for all different kinds of players. So for all of our people that are trying to go pro um, that are getting into like, you know, more advanced stuff and they want to be like serious about it, I'll add the extra chord shapes that I would tackle on. Um, and uh, what we're going to do here is you're basically going to be doing minor pentatonic. So this is going to be, I'm going to be singing on the C, C sharp minor pentatonic right here now when you're doing this kind of playing and these fills you need to understand that your goal is not to do a sick lick your goal is just to fill a space so i go so i'm just saying that chord lick chord and that's what you're doing and that's how you're going to fill. So you're going to practice doing that. And if that's all you can do at the beginning, no problem. If you get pretty confident like how I do it, um, you can replace the B minor hit down. No, I'm sorry, the uh, C sharp minor hit down. You can replace that, that attack. So when you go, and that will give you an extension of licks. So you can do like a little bit of a solo. And that will be, that's how I split my breaks. Um, we're not doing crazy things. Uh, I highly recommend do not li like transcribe John Mayer stuff. Uh, your goal when you're singing and playing is not to be the best guitarist. Um, it has never really served me to copy exactly what he does because there's a huge level layer of learning that goes there. So go and do it for fun if you want to. But if your goal is I want to sing and play this and you want to extract um, like a good amount of juice out of this, uh, just you're sitting in the C-sharp minor pentatonic. And then all you're going to do is just think of one phrase and then play the chords. There's nothing crazy here. And that will really help you get um, a lot of like extra juicy stuff out of the song. Um, but that's pretty much how the song's going to go. So jump in and when you're practicing the song, give me your feedback. Um, these are the early stage of these kinds of videos. So I'm not 100% sure exactly how I want them to flow. But I ideally want to set up the blueprint for how you learn these songs. Um, 
there is so much content out there that you can use uh, to help you. But that's pretty much it. Those chords are the same. I will test something out because editing wise, I don't want to go crazy until like, I just, I just not very good at video, video editing. Um, and uh, what I will do is I'm going to write everything and put it in a PDF and then I'll attach it to the video and I'll attach it to the school lesson as well. So if you're watching through YouTube, um, we have an online music school. It's free. Jump in on the content, have heaps of fun. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys absolutely kill it with this song. So it's a really, really fun song. I love it. And uh, hopefully uh, it serves you well. All right, let's rock and roll. <laughs> 